had lunch the other day. I think it was your uncle. He kind of asked you the legacy question. You know, what do you want your legacy to be? You know, thinking back on that now, you know, what what would you, you know, what do you want people to say about you in, in 20, 30 years after you're done racing? Yeah, that's such a tough question. Uh, I think on the surface, being self selfish is I want to be remembered as the best race car driver, right? I want to win races right now so that the record book shows. But I know that's not what it's all about. There's a whole bigger picture. There's a whole lot bigger plan to all this. And I feel like I haven't scratched the surface of what what we're gonna do in all this and what, why am I here? Why, why have I been able to keep finding race teams that will let me drive their race cars and, and you know, people that want to support me I don't know why, but they keep wanting to, and I'm I want to keep doing it for a long time. So I don't I don't think I've found what my legacy would be. Tried to get up early this morning to beat the rain, but it's not looking like that's going to cooperate. But we're uh, go meet Mr. David Hula. He's a uh, world champion corn grower, a bit of a, a living legend um, in this uh, in this ag world, so excited to see um, a little bit of his little slice of paradise here. Hey, Mr. David. Hey, Mr. Ross. How you doing, sir? Hey, nice to meet you. Yeah, you too, man. Yeah, yeah welcome. Yeah. Sorry for this, uh, we brought the rain with us, I think. Yeah, but... that's what, that's, you don't want rain either for the race, do you? No, but I'd take it at the track over the field whenever you don't want it. Unfortunately, it's not gonna be a good day for harvesting, but it'll give us opportunity to have some good conversation. That's later right. on, we'll get a chance to go to the home farm. That's right, yeah, uh, I hear it's uh, quite the sight there, man. Well, you know, we're just stewards for the good Lord, doing what he's provided us. Right. And, yeah, so, you know, I'm, I'm the third generation, and. Got the fourth one turning the truck around, and I got a two and a half year old grandson, so the fifth one's, yep. and he's around, so awesome. it's, it's, it is kind of neat. Yeah. So is. just to pass that baton on. Right. Do you want to jump in there and make a few passes? Uh, yeah, we can do that. Show me the ropes. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it's not nearly as fast as what you're accustomed <laughs> Yeah, but it's got rear steer, man. <laughs> That's exactly That's what we want our race cars to have. We're, I'm like, I mean, we call it skew, but we want, we want rear steer. Yeah. Yeah, well, we got it. And yeah. It turns. Yeah. That's for sure. Yeah. But yeah, we'll make a round or two and try to beat the rain and see see what this Dine and Grow corn's all about. That's right. Yes, sir. All right, all right cool. Man. Now, unlike, I'm going to just speculate here, unlike NASCAR, y'all probably don't really like to share much of your intellectual property. No, sir. Only amongst our own teams. Yeah. Um, so, like, I have one teammate in Xfinity with Justin Haley, but we also have an alliance with Richard Children's Racing. Okay. They have one Xfinity car this year, and then they have two cup cars, and they have an alliance with two more. So um, it's just, but it's got to be within that RCR, you right. know, brain trust. Uh-huh. Um, well, growers are like that as well. They feel like, well, if my neighbor's doing so much better, I got the same ground, how come I'm not doing as well? Right. So they just don't share some of that information. There's still, some of the growers will share and some are keep it kind of to themselves. And I was introduced to a fellow named Randy Dowdy down in Georgia. He created this next level group or concept. And I'm like, Randy, growers aren't gonna talk. They're not gonna share information. <laughs> Well, he got the right growers to start opening up. And now we have 15 camps across the country and growers are just exchanging information and it just opened my eyes to where like, this is awesome. Well, Ross, man, welcome to Rimwood Farms. And I got Jimmy Ward here, our nutrient provider. You know, y'all both have Ross? the same Good shirt to on. see you. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, we're standing here in front of the Glimpse of the Past Museum. You know, my late mom and my dad, you know, they were really good at spending their inheritance. And they were like kind of going out on vacation and my dad liked to collect antique equipment. My mom liked to collect antique toys and stuff. And I just thought it'd be way cool just to go in here and look. So one of the things my dad got 
I don't know what model this was, but it was a tractor that he saw and he just had to have it. Uh, it's got a, a Chevy engine in it. They stretch the flame, straight pipe. So I think if we were to fire it up, it'd probably get your blood going. I right think now. so. And um, he took it off out there and he cranked it up. So we went and looked at it. He said, watch this. And he revved it up, popped the clutch, and I thought he was going to flip it. My dad was one of the first ones to break 200 bushels in the area. So the competitiveness was there. That kind of passed on to me. And after graduating from college, I shared that, you know, my uncle passed away here on the farm. And, you know, family is important. So I came back and just started pushing things. I'm like, all right, what can we try? And the funny thing was, here, I try something that I think was new. And my granddad or dad say, well, we tried that. Yeah. It's like, really? Here, I'm trying to reinvent it. It's like, no, but, you know, things have changed. So they may have tried it, right. but that wasn't what was holding them back at that one time. Right. Because, you know, for you to get to pick up another four miles an hour, you know, you got to find out what is that one thing holding you back. Well, for us to get from the 200 to the 300, you know, it's not just planting the right hybrid. It's like what little things can we do to get to the next level and a, and a big thing you talked about earlier is taking care of the soil and that's one thing that dave was one of the, their family's one of the first ones in on around here was no-till uh yeah. and now we kind of refer to it in this area as never till yeah. because we don't take tillage into the field and we've we have the james river right out here that we have to be concerned about water quality and uh we've used that no-till practice to not only increase our yields because it helps us hold moisture in the soil, but also we see less runoff of soil going into our waterways and nutrients going into our waterways. How about how small a world it is? It, about two years ago to the week, you were in a skybox and you ran into my dad at a race. Yes, I was. Uh, your dad heard us talking about farming and the farming business. and. Uh, I had gone down at the lower part of the skybox and just to get a little bit better view and he asked if we were farmers and I said no, uh, we work in the fertilizer, seed and chemical business. And I said, why are you a farmer? He said, yes I am. I said, well what do you farm? He said, watermelons. And I thought, you know, there are not many watermelon farmers in, in Virginia. And I said, where are you from? He said, Florida. And I said, alright, I've got a question. Uh, what's a watermelon farmer from Florida doing in a skybox in Richmond? with a solar energy company and uh, he said well that's my kid down there running that car but you put a move on Dale Jr. is one of the best ones I've ever seen watching racing and your dad popped up out of that chair and <laughs> I don't know if this is taboo but he said Dale who <laughs> when you went around him and it was just it no way to be back here you know two yeah. years later with Ross after yeah. having that exchange and your dad was just ecstatic that night that night yeah. We had won the previous race in that car, and we came there and finished second, and that was my final race of the year. I got three chances in that car, and that really changed my life, those three races and that opportunity. And I was happy. I, walked, I went up to Dale Jr. after the race, and they caught it on video, and I just bumped him on the arm. I said, hey, man, that was awesome. Like, thanks for racing me clean. And, and he stopped, he's like, man, that's so awesome. You're, I root for you. I know I'm not supposed to, because I own the other cars, but." gosh dang you're fun to watch and he just went on and I was like How? he doesn't I didn't even think he knew me Ross I appreciate you coming out I know you're swamped with all the racing you got and then to take time out of this and you doing that two-track mind program you know being a spokesperson for ag you know I do a lot of talking across the country and just that commitment so I just like to continue to support whatever y'all got going on because you know we got to feed people people need to know where their food comes from yeah. and you know, educate them from whether it's water quality to fertility management or just production and where's the food come from. So, man, I appreciate what you've been doing. Squeeze in there three wide. Chastain trying to stay in front of Noah Gregson. Gregson put the bumper to him and now smoke coming out of the tent. A little bit of brakes there. He locked the left run up, slot down into turn one. Chastain draws away from that nine car, gets, gets him a little bit of room. No 
Allgaier knows there was contact with the 10 to go by. But now how patient will the 10 of Ross Chastain be? He's below the cut line now. Seven points below the cut line for Ross Chastain in the 10. When all this racing stops, whether that's next year or 50 years from now, I'm going back to the farm. I'm not staying on the road with NASCAR. It's, it's farming in some aspect, however I can plug back in.